Sorry, I'm testing my mic here, so give me a second. Because I'm not sure it's working, but we'll find out in a minute. This is obviously not going to be part one. This is probably going to be like part friggin' three. Come on, stream, catch up with me. Oh, yeah, it's working. Sorry, I'm testing my mic here. So give me a second. I don't know if I have the volume too loud on the microphone. If I do, you can let me know. Anyway, I did want to do one more thing for Kessler's course before I get rid of it and move on to the next thing, and that is um, he had some talk about sculpting and we did some sculpting on uh, the two holes that we worked on a little bit but we went into some detail I want to hit kind of the whole thing and just do it from kind of a macro standpoint here and uh, yeah I went back to his original course I don't remember if I saved the one where I made changes or not but anyway, we're just going to hit this from a from a large scale standpoint as far as sculpting goes because he's always like I don't know where to start. Well, I can tell you a couple of things. One thing is with tees when you when you're doing them like this, that's totally fine, but you don't need to bring that out all the way over here. I'm not going to get into that though. Um, let's stick with rays. Now, what would anybody do? This looks fine. Again, it's, you know, a golf hole. It's kind of flattish. So how do we change that up? Well, don't be scared to experiment. Look at that. That's 15 feet. Does that look huge? We just raised that 15 feet. And it barely made any change at all. This is a thing I think a lot of folks don't understand about sculpting. Don't, don't worry about what the height thing says does not matter look that's seven feet nine inches in other words if I was standing there I just raised a hill higher than I can see over higher than my head you know higher than when you lower the basketball to feel like a big person all that good stuff when you lower the rim sorry pay no attention to that uh, to that number the only time you need to pay attention to that number is when you're actually into the area of play which we are not we're way over here so we're just going to do some big stuff here, some large-scale work. And all this is doing, I mean, it's not affecting how the hole plays. It's not affecting anything. All it's affecting is the visuals for us. And I'll say when you combine this sculpting with planting is when you get interesting because you want to plant either on top of things or on the side of things or you know for instance in here you know there's a space between two hills well sure put some grasses or bushes in there um, if you if you find that this is boring to just have a little hill this long hill here and my wife is calling I'll call her back later and go ahead and put a uh, Put a ditch in the middle. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Also, you need to not be afraid of, if it's if it's behind here, like if I'm over here, I can't see what's behind there. So if I want to lower this down to make the trees look like they're further down below this hill level, oh, that's totally fine. Nobody's going to see back there. Nobody cares. In fact, you could do, you could make a little hollow back there if you wanted to. Let's do that to see what that does. And we leave this hollow area here, and that's where we decide to plant some stuff. And I know this is simple stuff. I mean, you guys already know this junk, but it's just a matter of, you know, and I'm going to get lazy and do it this way. Now, what did that do? Nothing. It just made it seem like there was a little hollow there, and when you're playing this hole over here, you'll have something maybe... Wow, that's not even in the way of any hole, is it? See, this land doesn't affect anything, which means you can either ignore it, or you can just raise it up and 
move on. Anyway, so here's what we did before. We kind of gave the landing area a little bump. Which one thing that does is it it's visually, it's more appealing from the T because it looks like, you know, the hole is going somewhere. It's doing something. Or we could, uh, you know, nobody's going to be hitting in this area of the fairway. So the playability of it really doesn't matter a whole lot. So if you want to angle it towards the hole, I mean towards the T to make it more visually appealing, you know, from here, that looks kind of cool, doesn't it? To see it kind of, you know, sliding from right to left a little bit. Well, go ahead. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not like anybody's going to be hitting the ball there. And if they do, then they suck and they deserve to have a horrible eye. Um, but we're just going to do some large scale stuff here. And it's going to be on more than just this hole. Now you'll remember we had to, we couldn't raise this part too much here because it, uh, it hid the second shot from us. But when we talk about bumping around bunkers, we're not talking about just just doing this. Now, granted, this can be a cool look. Watch. I mean, that's all you needed. But did you notice that was like two and a half feet to do that, or two feet, three inches? So if you're paying attention to you know what the elevation is, you're not gonna you're not gonna give it enough. I'll put it that way. Don't worry about what it is. Worry about what it looks like. And that sounds silly, but I'm, I'm telling you, don't worry about it. Unless you come in and you play it and you go, wow, that's just enormous. Well, then by all means, fix it. But even just that made a big difference. Here, let's just do that over here too. We're just going to go to two and a half feet and we're going to go right around the edge of this bunker. Not in the sand at all, just around the outside. Right down to there. And we'll pick it up over here and we'll actually go a little higher and then we'll start to lower it down don't forget you can do that too you can change how drastic your elevation is in the middle of making changes so you can hold that button down and uh, modify the height and then I'm going to come in here behind it just a little bit and this is as long as we're going to spend on holes today this is you know, but even what we're doing so far is making a big difference visually to this hole. Massive difference. And is it the elevation itself that's making the difference? No, it's really the, the shadowing and the way the light plays off of it. It's very much an artistic thing. This has nothing to do with the design of the course. You know, like, oh, well, having that hump here doesn't add anything to playability. You're right, it doesn't. What it adds to is immersiveness. And if you want to make a course that's going to jump out and have people go, oh, that's really nice, you have to immerse them. They have to feel like they're playing an actual round of golf. And I hate to say it, but a lot of the things that you do to make that happen are, um, aren't are necessarily making it seem more realistic. They're, they're just making it seem less like a game. And that may sound like the same thing. It's not. Like if you want to make this realistic, I think some of the elevations Kessler had in here were probably very realistic. But that doesn't matter because when you're playing a game, realistic can sometimes equate to uh, forgettable or boring. Now see, we're just making big, big changes here. And he's like, I don't even know where to begin with sculpting. Well, I'm showing you right here. That's all we're going to do is sculpt. I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to sculpt and we'll see what fast changes with sculpting can do to the course as a whole. Whether or not you think it's worth it or not. Just little sculpts. That's all we're doing. We haven't done anything drastic, nor will we. Like this planted area back here. It's just abysmally boring because it's not, 
it's just a flat little circle there. I think you probably bumped it up in the middle, but let's see how much you bumped it up. Not quite a foot. Anybody think that's going to do anybody any good? Let's give it some character. Hope I just hid your bench. You know what? Tough Nuggies bench. We'll, we'll find it. Put it back in. There you go. Boy, isn't that so much nicer? I mean, there's just, there's character to it now. If you wanted to, you could get even more carried away with it, but let's see. All right, so this view here, you're looking, but back here, all you see are, like this water back here, you don't see it at all. So why is it there, Kessler? I mean, is it does it visually come into any hole? And the answer is no. So you either need to bring that water into a visible position, which you, you could do by bringing it closer, or just screw it. Make this more interesting over here. Close in your play area a little bit. And um, I guess the, the best way to say it is you're in control of what the player is going to see and experience. So if you don't want to have a whole lot of work to do, confine the areas that they're going to see and appreciate and enjoy. You know, if you're in control, be in control. Take control. See back there, I'm just throwing like a hollow area. Over here, look, we can, we can even layer this. We can have a hill there in front, and I'm sorry, I don't care about that water at all. And then bring a hill in the other side. And now you've got two hills with a little valley area in between them here. This still needs to go up because your, your pipe has nowhere to go. Um, and sometimes this can result in some pretty wrinkly looking land. So if you don't want that, it's totally fine. Get your sculpting brush out here. Get your flatten. Don't be afraid to play with this. Flatten sounds scary, but if you're using a soft enough brush, you can kind of flatten and then go back in and, uh, you know, just work your way through one time. And with the flatten, you can hold down occasionally if you're in areas that you don't really care about, like this. It's not going to hurt anything. But even there, okay, we've added some character here. Go ahead, run that around, see what you get. So how's that look from the T? Well, it's already better. How's that second shot look? Well, it's already better. So you said you don't know how to start with sculpting. Well, I'm telling you, just don't pay attention to the numbers. Just pay attention to the looks. Look at what's happening with shadows. Look at what's happening with light. Think about, you know, if you want to plant things, where do you want to plant them? Um, that kind of deal. I think that if you were to leave this area here, you know, instead of moving the creek like I did before, you would do well to just give it some mounding. Little one there. Little one there, maybe. Maybe a larger one here. You know, which could play into a little mounting around the outside of that bunker. What's that look like? Well, look at that. Just look at the way the shadows play off of that, man. That's like 100% better than, than where it was. And I don't mean to say what you had was bad. Please don't take it that way. But um, you look at CSU or uh, even Adam Benjamin or some of those guys, and their rough areas are not just flat boring areas i mean you've got to have some character there i'd raise this whole thing a little bit honestly 
because the way you have the heavy rough there, it doesn't look like heavy rough from the tee. It looks like a shadow, which makes it appear like it's uh, um, a hump that's not there. But even in your fairway, I mean, you could add a little something. Like you could add a slope off of this bunker without getting drastic, but it would still add some uh, character. You know, maybe you want it to go down over here so that if somebody does lay up over there, it's going to run down towards the uh, towards the rough a little bit. And again, these are just big moves. I'm not taking my time and going slowly here. You know, but add some... It doesn't have to be bumpy, but it can have bumps in it, if that makes sense. Now, see, even look at this. If you wanted to, you could uh, make this almost like a little low spot over here, almost in like a little trench. Now, this is just ideas I'm playing with here. And you could... Uh, You could start to brush it in a little bit, take some, uh, verge like this, plop that in there, and look, we, I mean, we're doing nothing fancy. But I think bringing in, uh, bringing in a little shadow in here would be totally fine. Yeah, that's ugly. I think you need bigger trees. Yeah, like that. Now, what's that look like when we play it? I'm, I'm not going to do this with every hole, probably, but... Now, look, all we did was do some sculpting work. That's it. That's all we did was make some hills, move some stuff around. I love the way that bunker overlaps the other bunker. I think that's a very cool look. And I think this hole looks... It's not going to play a whole lot different, but boy, it sure looks better than what it was, doesn't it? And that took what? Uh, I don't know how long that took. Here, I can look. The stream's been on for 18 minutes, and I wasn't working on this for 18 minutes. So what, it took 15 minutes? Even the sculpting here, look back behind there at those uh, mounds and those hills. <laughs> As I look at them and hit a shot, that's... That doesn't work terribly well. But here, we've got a more interesting lie. Everything about that hole is better, Kessler. Everything. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to make any changes other than sculpting and a little planting. And we're going to go around and kind of hit some of these as we go. All right. Here's a par three. Oh, my gosh. So the height difference from here. So to the green, it is down uh, 5.6 inches. And yet we've got a creek coming through here. I know you want to keep the water in play. So let's see what we can do here. I know I'm using this oval brush a lot, but that's because it works really well for these large scale moves like this. Because I'm telling you, you don't have to bring the water any closer. But you could bump this up. That's three, six. Let's go just, yeah, let's go four. Now we've got probably a little too much runoff here. Drop that a little bit. Not too much because we're going to bring this up with it a little bit. So when we say to get more aggressive with your sculpting, I think that back fairway piece there has no real good purpose unless it's funneling your ball somehow. I'm going to make an assumption that we're going to funnel it down into kind of a hollow area here and funnel it back forward or at least give, give them a side hill kind of lie. 
if you know what I mean. And I'll show you a trick if you're ever worried about what uh, what the changes you're making are going to do as far as how the hole plays. You could just go play the hole, but I think one other thing that you can do. Give me a second, I'll do it. Oh, it's not going to work. But you can get just to the edge of your green and you can see quite a ways off. And you can see that's going to run down everywhere. It's going to do exactly what I was thinking. So that's fine. So from the T, that already looks better. You know, we've got some uh, character here. What else could we do? Well, if you're not going to plant any of this, What's up, Pablo? I'm just hitting uh, one of the things Kessler was asking about was sculpting, just major sculpting. He doesn't even know where to start, he said. So taking this one and uh, not changing any of the design aspects on these holes today. We're just, we're just going to get into some sculpting work and show how just little things can change holes drastically. For instance, we just did uh, hole one. We just did hole one, and I think you can see from here how much different it is. Just doing some sculpting, add some character to the rough. We layered, now this bunker is layered against that one back there, which gives you a really cool effect from the T of being half blind, but not really. This area is not really ever going to be in place. So we went ahead and sloped it a little bit. We bumped the green up. We, we put a couple of little hills over here, a little valley. We made like a ditch and just threw some plants in there, that kind of deal. So we're just doing easy stuff today. Um, the last couple of times we did some major, like moving streams and redoing bunkers a little bit, that kind of thing. We ain't doing that today. Well, that's kind of an ovally shape you got here, so we'll just stick with it. Yes, one can tell by playing his courses. You are 100% sure. Uh, correct, sorry. I'm half reading what people are saying, but I'm listening to uh, two of my children downstairs who are... Uh, they get along okay, but they also can want to kill each other occasionally. I do not understand that tree, but I'm not going to mess with it because I said I wasn't going to deal with that stuff today. All right. Let's... Now we got to save room for our uh, player unknown battlegrounds village, which we know is something that has to happen. Now this bunker, you did a better job of uh, bumping up around it. I would say though we've got it, we've got it coming down off of that bunker, but not very hard. I don't know. I think I'd like to see it play into the green a little bit more. You know what I mean? Let the if you're going to play off of it um, with some slope, do it a little more drastically. What is up, dude? Oh, you changed your name around a little bit, did you? Got a whole TV thing there now? Or have you done that for a while and I just didn't notice? What happens if we get a little more drastic in here? Eh. And we start to lose a little bit, which is why I think you need to. Oh, you took the Xbox One off. That's what you did. Gotcha. Hey, everybody's bored today. They can come watch me mess with Kessler's crap for a minute. Now, again, I don't. We're not going to do a ton on these holes because I don't have time to screw with all of them. But let's see. I'm working on Kessler's uh, Japan course just a little bit. I, I worked on it the last few days and redid a couple of holes a little more drastically. Today, I just wanted to hit sculpting only to kind of show him. I mean, you guys remember the second hole. It was totally flat. The difference between the tee and the green was like five feet. It just it didn't do anything. Now it looks like we've got a bigger, it's almost like we've got a drop off behind the uh, Oh, behind the bunker, we've got some hills on the left and right that kind of frame our hole a little bit more. Um, 
that fairway is more visible um, because it slopes. And I tell you what, hitting into this green feels a lot more intimidating to me when there's this hill rolling down into the creek or pond or whatever you want to call it, as opposed to when it was just totally level. And um, I really don't care about playing it, but even just that amount of sculpting makes a huge difference. Huge. And did we change the way the hole plays? Not really. I mean, a little bit of uh, movement off the... Uh, bunker onto the green. The other thing that we're going to do there is, uh, since we did plan a couple of things on hole one, we'll do that here really fast too. Just to say, how could we frame it in even more? Well, I know you didn't want, you wanted this course to feel kind of open, and that's fine. But, um, you know, now that we've got this hollow area over here, you could again, and I'm just cheating and doing this the fast way, so don't, this is not final kind of plant plant work but it's enough to work with for now you know you could kind of throw something in there again I really love taking these birch trees and um, using them to brush in areas like that they work really well because you don't even have to bring them down that far you can leave it big and, and almost look like it's you know a big bush kind of plant back there if you wanted to. Really on this one I think the the bigger issue is over here on this side where we have some shadowing. If we could find a way that shadow on that front fairway is not fantastic. What if we yeah but you kind of need that tree there don't you? Alright we'll just leave it. Uh, I still say that using um, heavy rough instead of the natural landscape there would be better. And again, we're just doing fast work here, so no, no judging from the peanut gallery today, okay? But for instance, what if you spent some time with grass over here? Just a little bit. I mean, that's, that's too thick. Nah, that's too much there. Maybe back in here. And then... Uh, I'll throw some of these in there. Do we have any drier looking grass? There we go. That's what I was looking for. Some kind of contrast. Play a little with the light contrast, light and dark. A grass like this would work well in a shadow area. So again, just back over here a little bit. You could... Again, this big green plant, I think, would work well for your Japan idea as far as the look goes. You know, throw a couple of those in there. And already, you know, we've, we've at least broken things up a little bit, giving it, giving it a little more character. Uh, we're not going to get any rocks, but again, I'm going to leave hole two. Let's take a look at hole three. Okay. This one has a little more roll going to it. The depth on these is fine, but they could still be handled on the outside a little bit more. Look at this, though. I don't understand this. This is just a big, flat expanse of nothing. Why? Oh, that bunker makes my balls hurt. Anyway. And the only reason I say that is from here, it kind of is, I don't know, it's like a weird, I don't know, it's like if you were playing Operation, this would be like in the hip joint, and you'd have to reach in and pull it out. Let's just get a little more drastic over here. Let's take what you have and just bump it up a bit. I like the fact that from here, it drops down before it hits the fairway and goes back up again. That's a good way of... Um, adding interest, but I think we could take it a little further. What, you were thinking of the operation thing? <laughs> but again, if you're going to control what, you're, what your players are going to look at, really control it. I mean, box it in here. Don't, don't let their eyes, don't let my eyes wander off to areas that you don't want me to see. 
because you didn't do anything with it. Confine it a little bit. You can eventually type yes. I have a special filter on there for you, just specifically to, uh, you know, screw with autocorrect and things like that. It seemed like a, a weird thing to purchase, but I, I bought it anyway because I knew it would bug you. I think having this second shot come up here off of this edge is a, a neat idea. I'm wondering though, this flattens out and it's so wide, you would think that it either needs to fall off one side or the other. The falling off to the right is okay. That's fine. We'll leave that. But if we're going to have it fall off that way, why not almost, uh, and this is going to hide a little of, of your fairway up here, but that's okay, I think. You know, go ahead and give this area something to do. And part of what would help here is just, now look, that's again 7 feet 4 inches. Does that look like I dropped it 7 feet 4 inches, Kessler? It does not. Ignore the numbers unless you're dealing with play area. If I'm going to be hitting the ball out of something seven feet deep, yeah, go ahead and pay attention to it. If I'm not, then who cares how deep it is? Also, these bunkers. Did, does anybody think that anybody's going to be playing out of the front side of these bunkers? I, I doubt it. And if they are, then they can have a pretty stinky shot. I think that's totally fine. So, again, I'm not going to change the bunkers, but we're going to sculpt around them. I think on this one, instead of building up the outside, let's let's build down around the outside a little bit. See if that sets them off a little bit. Well, it absolutely does. It's a little too drastic, but not bad, because you're not going to leave this area the way it is. You're going to make sure that there's a mound in here that comes up over here. Well, shoot, that's already better. And let's play off of this bunker. So give this a slope down. And this is a wide fairway landing area anyway. So we're, we're kind of pinching it off, but not by making it smaller, simply by saying if you land in the wrong spot, you're going to run down to the uh, left a little bit and have a worse lie. Yeah, I agree, Clint, but like I, I said earlier on this one, I'm on this episode, uh, the first two we did, we did a little more ex expansive. This, I'm, I'm trying to show him that, look, you can leave your design exactly the way it is, and just through sculpting, take it up, you know, quite a notch, I think. Sculpting and a little planting. In fact, what we'll do is we'll make that kind of a little hollow area in there and we'll throw some stuff in there and you'll see this does not take a lot of time it's just a matter of saying okay we need some interest here how are we going to get it that's better now these two bunkers do need a little help as far as being more dramatic and again, we're going to go the easy route. I'm just simply going to go to the outside. I'm going to raise it like two and a half feet and just kind of outline the very back side here. It's a new makeup technique, outlining your backside. If you've never heard of that. You can also outline your backside by sitting on the toilet too long. Which, if you have a good book, that happens occasionally. What happened? Yeah, I outlined my backside. Yes, you did. Now, see, because of where you have the light coming, uh, I think we can get even more drastic than that. Go out a little bit further and, and bump it even higher. Because the shadowing is not an issue. And when you don't have shadows to accentuate it, you have to be more dramatic. You just you, you, There's no way around it. What does that do? What's well, already better? I wish we could make some more wholesale changes on this one. I think it, it could use a little more 
uh, help as far as the fairway shaping goes. Because right now the fairway shape is not it's not fitting into the land very well for me. Like I think this side needs to actually have a like a little ridge all the way down that goes into this one we made. Almost like a little ditch. Why? I don't know. I think it would just frame the fairway a little better. And if you guys see me doing something, you go, no, that's stupid, don't do that. Now well, go ahead and tell me, I don't care. I'm just trying to artistically maneuver the landscape here to give this whole a, a fighting chance of looking a little better here. Um, I'm not sure, what do you guys think? That this land should be flat up to the green? I mean, that's fine. I think if you're going to do that, you do need to deepen these bunkers a little bit. Otherwise, you're going to need to hump up around the outside. Not a lot, just a little bit up here by the green. Yeah, like that I think would be good. But you don't want to hide your green. I get that. So we may, we may lower that bunker a little bit. In fact, I think we'll have to just a little. And this front one here, you can really go ahead and set it down. I think we're already making a lot of headway here. Yeah, let's do. Let's. And I'm not going to make these drastic changes, but just a little bit. Yeah, I'm just going to hold it down and see what we get by holding it down. This sometimes works, but it sometimes totally screws things up. So you got to be careful too when you just hold it down. Well, that's already a little better. Just going to hit this upper area. If you're having trouble seeing, by the way, just move your camera to, uh, and again, this is a dumb thing to say because you know it, but move your camera to where the sun changes its angle a little bit, and then you have a, a better idea of what's actually going on with the depth of your bunkers and that. Uh, raise. Actually, I think hiding that would be pretty cool. Hiding that little piece of fairway there. What would that do? Just a little bit. Not bad. And if you don't want to hide it, it's wide enough. Bring it up from the other side. What's that do? That might be too much. Yeah, that's too much. Let's bring it down a little bit. If we're going to do that, then we'd have to come behind it a little bit like this. Actually, maybe having a little hollow on that side wouldn't be a bad idea. And not all the changes have to be big and dramatic. That's too, too dramatic for me. That area is a little bumpy. And like I said, bumps aren't bad, but bumpy is bad for the kind of course I think you're looking for here, Cass. I don't know if that's a good nickname or not, Cass. Sounds like you're a female character on a Star Trek episode. Or an alien race of some sort. Beware the Kess. Okay. Why? What do they do? Take all your peanut butter or something? Alright, let's just play that once and then we'll do a little planting on it. And you, Clint, since you've been here since we looked at this hole, you tell me. Does this look better or worse than what we had before? It's a little more dramatic. But I think it's definitely a step up. Yeah, especially since the play area on this one is just... It 
fact, I think I see one thing you could do right away with planting that would help you a lot. Now see, that first shot is going to push to the left a lot more than it did before. And our second shot now has some layering effects on it. You see what I mean? There's, there's more interest there. The green is kind of perched up there. Eh, maybe Clint left. Who knows? Bye, Clint. I know I'm boring to listen to at times, so that's totally fine. But I noticed that these things we put here already started to make a big difference. And I'm curious if, uh, if doing more here wouldn't be even cooler. Like, let's get a tree involved. Make it seem... Ah, what tree would work? No. Okay, let's do this. It's hard to get the right angle here. Yeah, that could be cool. And then take another one or two of these behind it. Oops. Does that screw up hole two too much? Oh no, not at all. It's going to give us a more interesting look off the tee. And then what you can do is down in this area. Uh, let's take this one. And don't worry about it looking a little funky right now. That's okay. You can fix all that as you go by getting a little more involved. Maybe even Yeah, that might be too much. With the light hitting it directly, that's too much. But if we tuck it back in here, now we've now we're talking. What can we do? I do like these. I think these are very helpful at filling in like that. Ooh, that might be too much. There we go. Then take, want a grass that's not going to be too, too light, but not too green either. That'll work. Now you can see this is a scampy technique. If you're not sure how to do this, let me know and I'll show you. That way you get rotation without having to sit there and rotate each one individually. And I'm going to get a little contrast color. Bring this one up over here a little bit too. 
throw a couple of these in there for good measure. And try and find places where it's going to look correct. Like if you hide them all back in the shadows, that doesn't do you any good. You could even, if you wanted to, get some... Whoa, that's a little too much on the flowers there. But if you want to just tuck a couple in there, sure, go for it. Yeah, put a big one over here. In fact, I know that uh, you were talking about cherry blossoms at one point. That That's hard to pull off. I know what you were planning to do, I think, was use these in your trees, but it is not easy to pull off. Oh, it'd be fun to try. If you can't tell, I really like these white flower bushes a lot because they're just a good little piece of contrast to chuck in. Especially if you can find a place where there's some shadow and some uh, light. They just tend to... They grab any light that hits them because they're white. So like up in here would be a good spot. Now, we'll play this hole one more time. And I'm not going to plant anything else on this hole. Although, if I were doing this for me, I would plant in here a lot. I'm um, actually going to do one thing. We, we can we can make that area more interesting without planting. I think. By lowering there and then kind of raising around it a little bit. You know, this will help vary the tree heights. Yeah, that's probably too much, isn't it? Now we only may go through the first few holes then, because this is still taking a little bit of time, and I don't want to be on here. I don't want this to last for hours and hours and hours. Well, let's see. Just... Uh Actually, one more thing. I know I keep saying that, but there's always one more thing that comes up. So let's do this. Let's lower right there and then raise on the outside of it just a little. Kind of block it in a little bit. Give ourselves a couple little bumps here in the rough. Actually, that one's fine. Or I do think if we're going to do a little planting there, we should at least... At least try and fit it in a little bit. Okay, we'll play this one one time. Now we've got a point of interest over here with our with our uh, trees and our planting, and it kind of keeps that left side from seeming so bare. You'll remember the left side of this hole seemed like just a big, open, empty expanse of nothing. It also, if you want to challenge this left side to get closer, you, you get to take on this tree, or at least it feels like you do. It's never, it's not in play. You also have this ditch over to the left that you didn't have before. So now if you get over there, you're, you're in a world of hurt because your lie is going to be bad, both from an angle and because you're in a heavy rough. Now if you wanted to, you could bring planting even further in here. Um... I think just putting heavy rough in there would take care of that. In fact, I will do one thing here. I'm going to just put some heavy rough right there. I'm not going to rough the whole thing in, but just right there in that bunker area, just to show you how much of a difference that would make. So I get lost on your course here a little bit. But just on this taller area here. Right. 
and if you wanted you could even leave little bits of uh, natural rough in there as highlights I'm not going to though because I think that takes way too much time for what we're doing let's see what uh, just roughing in that area where there's not plants let's see what that does I don't want to actually do it do it there we go good enough Well, it already looks better from the tea, even. It's okay, a little fast is not a big deal, I don't think, on this. Big fairway. Yeah, that looks, that looks a lot better. There's a lot more contrast there. I think we could drop that uh, fairway down there just a little bit. It worked well in my head, but not quite as well in practice. No, not flattened. Hey, I found your hole. Look at that, I found it. Let me build this side up a little bit more. And what that should do, we'll play it one more time. I don't care what tee it's from. I, I really don't. Because I just want to get to a certain spot in the fairway out here. Right about there should be, should be the correct place where we were playing from before. Yeah, only now we've got See, we could, we could make the rough a little more interesting here, but now we've got a good view. We've got that planting in the way. The bunkers stand out a little bit more. So, so far all we've done, we've done some sculpting and a little planting on three holes, and that has taken yeah, about 45 minutes. So, so far in 45 minutes, we've bumped this up a good bit, in my opinion. And since it's my stream, my opinion is the one that counts. This one, you've got a little more um, um, going for you on. It still is pretty simple, but you've got a little more movement, which is good. Like, look, this, this is on more of an angle. You've got this kind of blocking in this side. You've got a hill blocking in this side. Our T area is a little boring, but that's okay. Um, I don't think you need to do a whole lot to this one to get it right where I think you want it. So I'm just going to do a couple of little things. Little things. And we'll see if it modifies it just, just a little bit. And this is going to change the way the whole plays a little. I don't think you need to have, I think if you're going to do this, go ahead and let your gradient steepen out a little bit. That's not going to hurt it. So you've got this playing off of this hill already. So go ahead and bring it all the way down to the green. You know, don't, don't make it stop here. And then you've got those rocks back there. Hang on a second, I'm going to ask my wife. Hey, can I call you back in a little bit? Is that okay? All right. Love you, babe. See ya. There. I didn't want to leave her hanging. She's my wife, dang it. You can't leave your wife hanging too long. Otherwise, she starts to think you burn the house down. Maybe that's just my wife. I don't know. I thought it was fairly universal. Now, do you have to do what I'm doing right now? No. I just had an idea for something I thought might look cool. I don't know if it will or not. Yeah, I think so. I think it's cool. But it's also, you know, totally unnecessary. 
I do think it's cool. You're, you're blocking off this side of the green a little bit. But why not block it off some more? I mean, I hate to say it, but if somebody's going to get down in that bunker, that's far enough away from the place surface of the uh, green. I'm going to go ahead and make this like a mound. I'm just trying to do it gently so I don't get into your green too much here because I don't want to screw up what you had going on with your slopes. Because, hey, it's, just, it's still your track. I'm just trying to help out here. Doing your little things. This would be a place, though, where we were talking about being more dramatic. You could uh, make all of this just... It, it's 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 good. It's better than what there has been. But you could even step it up a little bit more, I think, and get away with it. What does that do? See, we're, we're bringing that bunker out just a little bit more than what it was. If you could slope that off the back even more. Ooh. To do that pin. Oh no, that's too much. <laughs> I think if we did that on that pin, people might scream and holler at you. More than they already do. Oh geez, that would suck, wouldn't it? I wish there were a way to keep this mounted all the way. I think you kind of can. Just got to be careful not to overdo it. Look at that. I raised that a foot. Over a foot. It really didn't hurt anything. I'm trying to keep the sand as visible as it was previously. While still increasing the depth of it. Easier said than done. And you get down there on the bottom, if you don't have a lot of room to raise, then go ahead and lower around it. And what I mean by that is, let's say I've got a knob here. Let me save this in case it doesn't let me undo this. When I say you can lower around it, instead of raising, let's say you've got something here. And you're like, you know, that's just not quite high enough. But if you raise it anymore, it's going to get all pointy. Well, then come out a little bit. And Go down around it. Do you know what I mean? It's like you, you don't have to raise. Lowering works just as well. What does that do? And see, we did very minimal changes to this. I lowered the area in the front of that bunker a little bit. Um, sloped the fairway a, a little bit. Gave the bunker a little more definition. And, I, I mean, this was a good hole already, but I, I still think that the changes we just made, Kessler, made that hole a better hole. I mean, just that little tiny bit that we did. Let's try something silly. Can we run it up there? You think? Oh, bounce left. I did not expect that. Which I should have since I'm the one who just put the mound there. Anyway, I like that hole a little better. And we didn't have to do much because you'd already done a pretty good job there. Hole 5, that's the one that runs along the other side of 1, right? And we'll, we might stop after this one, or I might pick and choose a little bit. Now, this is the one that's got that tree in the middle that I didn't quite understand. And I will say, having this tree here, I'm not sure why you need these here. Number one, you've got a bush that's, like, really close here. And I just do not understand why this bush is right here. Or why these two are here. Now, I get, I get having trees there. Please don't take that as though I... I don't understand having trees. It's those specific trees there that I don't get. And I'll be more specific here in just a second. 
that type of tree has not come into play a lot on this course from a play area standpoint. You've had a lot more wider trees and not as many uh, just tall trees, you know what I mean? So I think if you were to change those trees to like an oak or a, an elm, I'll maybe bring an elm in here. No, that's not going to work. No, that's not going to work either. And then even uh, block it in underneath here a little bit. Oh, too far, too far. You know, darken that area a little bit. Maybe now you could bring in one of these elms like this. Just for contrast. That's too much, isn't it? Too dark for what you're going for. I don't want to destroy the look that you have necessarily as much as enhance it oh still too much all right i'm gonna have to get picky There, I think that look pulls off what you were going for, but does so in a little cleaner way. Now, as far as just sculpting on this one, I like you've got just a little crown here, and it kind of is an odd camber. It's, it's cambering towards the middle. I wonder what would happen if you took this tree, though, and let it play off of it a little bit more. You know what I mean? So it's not quite so penal. If you hit right next to it, it'll it'll slope away a little bit more. Why can't I find the center of that? Yeah, I think it's better the way it was there. But what you could do is like right here where I planted this tree. A little down, move up around the edges here a little bit. Not a ton, like in between here. See what I mean? Give this a little bit of a knob from a from a shadow perspective, and I think we're increasing the realism of this without changing the way the whole plays at all. And I'm, I know I said we'd do big moves. These are not big moves I'm doing, but I think they are going to have a bigger impact than you think. Yeah, look at that. Even even just those little tiny moves we just made made a difference to how this hole looks from the T that I think is more um, important than some of the big moves you could make. I almost wish you could reverse camber this, but I don't. I'm not going to... For the whole thing. I think you could pretend there's a reverse camber if you ran it from like right here all the way across. But this is outside of the actual area that's in play. You know what I mean? Because they're not going to play until up here. And then kind of overdo the camber that you have up here a little bit more. I don't think that's going to change the look drastically, but it does change it a little bit. Do you see now it takes your eyes and it, it turns your eyes this direction, which brings this area more into play. Why? I don't know. It's just a mental thing. It's like a little game you're playing with the player. And you, win, you want to win the game. I think this hole would benefit from the entire hole area being a little higher. 
than its surrounds, if that makes sense. Not much, just a little bit. You know, having it run off the fairway a little bit more. And that, I think, just added some bumps, but that's okay because we can take care of them. By the way, people who are asking how to get a smooth gradient, this is how to do it. But you have to just go a little at a time, and you can raise and lower just a little bit. And you have to look at it from different angles to see what the sunlight is doing. Because the sunlight will show you a lot of uh, bumps that you didn't realize were there. I think having a little hump in here would be a good, a good thing. Nothing drastic, just a little bit. And again, it's... Well, here, I'll explain what I'm doing. The reason I think having a little hump there is good is because it's it's not a place where a lot of people are going to be playing a ball, but it looks like you're going to run people down towards that bunker, when in reality, you're not. I mean, maybe a tiny bit, but it looks like it's going to. Like, it looks like it has the possibility of running down into this bunker. So that bunker is... I'm, I'm just going to leave it for the most part. I'm not going to screw with it too much. Because I think for what you want it to do, that the way you have it is the only way to really do it. Personally, if I were you, I'd, I'd move it further away from the play area and simply lower it, you know, make the drop from here into the sand more drastic. So in reality, it's going to play. It's going to play like it's close to the putting surface, even though it's not. Like, give it a little room to breathe. Move it out a foot, two feet, and uh, make it seem like it's going to play a little differently than it is. And again, this is giving... It's going to run towards the bunker a little bit, but it's more of an illusion than it is an actual uh, play characteristic of the hole. All I'm doing here, this is just for visual pop. This is not really going to change a whole lot of how anybody plays this hole. It simply is giving it a little more character, I think. Now you've got this mound behind the green, and that's fine, but I think if you're going to put a mound behind the green to hide things, you can, again, you can still be more drastic in how it's done, simply to make it more visually appealing. It's not going to change how it plays, but it's going to change. Sorry, they got to have a way to get to the next hole, so I figure that's where that'll be. That, and by doing that, you can kind of layer this in front of that other one a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. Yeah, see how they kind of overlap a little there? And that layering effect makes a big difference visually for people. Ah, that was too wide. My nine-year-old son is downstairs. I downloaded Fortnite onto his Switch. And I was trying to help him figure out how to play it. But that game... How he can play it on a Switch or on any console, I don't know. I would need a mouse to make that game work for me. That and his controls are set up, uh, they're not inverse. And that's the only way I can play with a controller, is to have the uh, up, down, left, right inverted. You know what I mean, like you're flying a plane as opposed to you know, controlling at your head. There, now see, look, the changes we made here, it drives your eye a little bit. I think that bunker stands out a little differently. It just, it just, the whole flows better this way. And we didn't do much. I mean, we did really not a lot to this, did we? I want to see if this bounces down. Nope. And I do want to play it one time from the fairway, so... 
Oh, magnabbit. I hate it when it does that. Put you on the tea box, but it doesn't put you on the tea. We'll just play towards the tree. I don't know how that's fast. I'm not swinging fast, but whichever. And see, that slope is going to push us down to the right a little bit, which is really nice. We're going to have a slight side hill, but playing from this angle, which is the angle most people are going to play from, this knob here, I think layers, which we talked about layers a lot, the mounds behind it kind of layer a little bit, and everything looks like it's funneling towards that bunker when it's really not. That green looks awfully crazy from back here. That's because it is awfully crazy. Well, that works. I don't know why I aimed over there, but whatever. I'm not going to do any planting on this hole. I'm going to leave that hole just the way it is, and I tell you what, how long have we been going? We've been going for one hour and 11 minutes, which we haven't spent the whole time actually making changes. Some of that was just fiddling around. What's the next hole? The next hole, oh my gosh, okay. What did we do here? So you've got a dip there. We've got a dip here. So this water is sitting where the green is 11 feet higher. And this, it's 28 feet. So this water is higher than this. I'm wondering why you didn't just bring the water down here with like a little waterfall coming. Because, I mean, you put it there, but you didn't. There's nothing there. It's just empty grass. Now I'm curious. I'm not going to save this because I told you I was just going to make sculpting changes, but I need to understand something. All right, so. Because right now I don't, I don't get this. What would this do? If we put that there. Shoot, you could even just leave it as two ponds if you wanted to. But what would it do? You had some kind of a waterfall thing coming over here. I know, nobody wants waterfalls, but that's, that's totally fine. I mean, that's just a missed opportunity, isn't it? I mean, you've got two options. Either a waterfall or planting of some sort. And of those two options, you chose neither. And I just do not understand that at all. Like, not even a little bit. I think we're going to do it like so. Sorry, I have to do this. I don't, I don't see there being another option. I think this must happen. Leave it there and then sculpt it off a bit. Yeah. Can't tell why the waterfall is not quite where I thought it was. That's all right, we'll move it slightly.
And if you want, you can you can do the cheating way that you've been doing and just use rocks if you want to. That's fine. Here. A big stone here of some sort that it can play off of. And a little one over here, maybe. With a bigger one behind it. Yeah, sorry, that just seemed like a missed opportunity. Okay, back to sculpting for a minute. And I'll be honest with you, the only reason I did that is because you had that little low area there, but it was just, I mean, there was nothing. There was nothing to it. There was nothing you could do. There was nothing you could add there. All right, there's nothing here. So this could be really a big Thing that you, I mean, you could play off of this hill big time because it's not really going to affect anything else. So let's do it. Let's go ahead and play off of that hill. Again, we're moving the player's eye line is what you're doing. I think that whole thing needs to be bumped up just a little bit. This area could certainly be hammered a little bit. You know, having that bunker there makes no sense with that tree. Having that tree there with the bunker, I, I don't get. And it's just, it's too busy. Like, planting is great, but busy is a little different. In fact, let's do this. Let's take that one out. Let's use this tree that you had. And we can overhang the bunker a little bit, but not right on top of it. Put it over here. Yeah, even that's a little too close. There. You get in that bunker, you're going to have a... I mean, you're kind of hosed. I also think that that bunker's too... It's too small and too much over here for this hole. Like, if I were making changes, that's one I would change almost immediately. I think this needs to be um, more visually appealing by going up a little bit. That's too high. I went too far. I went too far. Never done that before ever in my whole life. Ever. Not once. I think bringing this water a little more into play would be a good idea. Um, however... I also think putting a bunker right here would be really cool. It would kind of save people from the water, but not really. I think it would just be a visually appealing thing. I was going to say, I hope I didn't get into that next T too much there. And I like the idea of this green just kind of falling off behind it, so let's keep that idea, but kind of accentuate it a little bit. <clears throat> However, falling off behind it doesn't mean it has to be completely level after that. You know, it can have some character over here. Actually, the way those shadows are working, let's do this. Let's, let's build this area up here. Because nobody's really looking at that side of those rocks. They, they are not part of anything bigger than themselves. They're just there. So go ahead and pull your ground right up into them. And let's play off of that uh, play off of that slope by layering it in front of the other one there. Yeah, that's already better. That's already better. Hmm. Trying to get the feel right here. It's close. It's not quite there yet. I feel like the approach into the green on this one is kind of an issue because it's just it's just kind of there. 
Like there's no point of interest. You don't have to have a bunker. That's fine. But I feel like if you're not going to have a bunker, there needs to be just something else that's changing the eye line a little bit. I think a bunker here still would have been pretty cool. Actually, let's outline let's outline this bunker one time and then just play the hole and see see if the little changes that have been made um, are visible, if you can tell the effect that they have or not. That's too heavy. That'd be a little lighter on this, I think. Yeah, that's just abysmal. A little lighter touch needed. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. In fact, this bunker would be pretty cool. Well, number one, if it was a little bigger, but number two, if it kind of fell off to both sides. Do you know what I mean? Like, this was kind of lower, and that over here was kind of lower. A little flatter, though. But this middle section was just kind of pumped up. I don't know. Let's play it one time, and then I think we're going to call Kessler's course done, and I'll send it to him like this. Uh, I have to see if I kept the other changes. I don't know if I did or not. Because this really, this stream is not about making changes and saying, here, here's your fixed course. It's showing you how to make the change, why you make the changes. See, bringing that water in there, I think, changed the, the oh crap, I didn't, hang on, i got to fix those bunkers. Sorry. It's not right to do those, to do that little one and leave these hanging. I don't want to build up too far though because this this area back here is already kind of interesting on its own. Um, there's a little movement back here which is nice, but I don't want to detract from the other too much. So let's just do, yeah, let's just do that much. Let's see what that does. Yeah, I think that'll help. And see, this is already raised a little bit, so you don't need to do too much on this part of this one. But I think coming down into here, you definitely could. Could uh, fiddle with it a little bit. And like I said, Kessler, on yours, we don't need to do a whole lot of playability changes it's more cosmetic stuff we're working on here. Um, ways to take your design and simply accentuate what your ideas are. Like, I don't think we're changing any of your ideas, but we're taking your ideas and making them a little more apparent and a little more, uh, I don't know, a little more forceful. If that's the right way to talk about it. Now we didn't do much of those bunkers, but I think it's going to look a lot different. Yeah, see those bunkers already have a lot more character now, don't they? Dude, this hole, this hole does though. It's got some problems, and I'll tell you why. The these areas that you've built in here. I don't know. I guess it's 600 yards, but still, I just, I don't know. No, I guess I, I see it. I see what you're going for a little bit more here. But I think there's, I think there's one problem that we've got to address really fast. I was working on that hole without realizing quite where the landing areas were.
One more shot, then I think we'll be done. <clears throat> Actually, that's a better look from the T anyway, because it kind of looks like, you know, that fairway just continues and it layers nicely. We could lower the area just in front of those bunkers a little bit um, to give it a little more, but I think that the gains on the second shot, boy, it's still just not quite enough. The slope here is just drastic. And I think you want your, I mean, I think you want all that to be higher. All right, we're going to, I know I said that was it, but if you haven't figured out yet, I'll say that's it a lot of times, and it won't be it. So just chill out. Just chill out. It'll all be fine, I promise. And I'm wondering if I made those elevation changes. I don't, I don't feel like I did. Maybe I did. I am going to drop the front of these just a little bit. raise this to where it's not quite so humpy a little smoother bring this a little closer yeah and like I said we need this to be on that same level a little bit more I think that second shot needs to be better than it is. Shoot. Nab it. Can't tell. You're not going to hear a lot of swearing on this podcast, but or sorry, this uh, stream. But that's okay. If you guys desperately want it, I'll give it to you, but I don't think it's going to detract from anything. Yeah, see, i got to figure out. Well, I'll let Kessler do it, but you got to bring those bunkers more visually like slope this area to the right back down to the right okay yeah the second shot's going to be a lot better okay you just there was nothing appealing about this second shot at all now okay now we've got something to play with and we're playing into something that's got a little more yeah okay that hole's better that hole is better what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the first six holes. Um, oh, shoot, not flatten. Then I'm going to uh, pause for just a second and reload the original version of this course and play the first six holes. And if anybody wants to chime in with their thoughts about it after that please do so yeah it's better all right so let's play test holes one through six all right so you can look visually here we've got some mounding to the left to the right we've got some slopes our bunkers are more pronounced you can actually play right over the edge of this bunker which now kind of has an infinity look going into the uh, second bunker behind it or third bunker depending on how you want to look at it a much much better overall look I believe you could still do more we bumped up the green complex which uh, made it stand out a little more that mound back there in the back is now up um, so it's a little more visually appealing That should be exactly right. Nope, it's a little short. No, it's going to be awfully close to what I wanted. I wanted fast or slow on the backswing, but either way. It's okay. I'm not worried about getting an eagle. I don't need none of them eagles. 
Now you can see we did a little grass planting on hole two. So here's hole two. First thing we did was make the tee box uneven. You're welcome. But no, we made a little more mounting to the left, a little more to the right. We brought the green up. We made um, the fairway kind of funnel balls a little bit more as opposed to just being flat. We definitely accentuated the bunker and brought the slope from the bunker into the green a little bit more. We did some planting to uh, behind and to the left to frame this hole a little bit better. Where's that put me? I think those were good modifications. Ah, it's going to flatten out. This hole, we, we did some pretty major changes to it. We did all this planting to the left. We uh, accentuated the bunkers to the right. We cambered the fairway both left and right at different places. We added some mounding um, there here in the center area and to the outside. Um, made a small ditch area here. We sloped those uh, bunkers down more towards the player added some heavy rough, accentuated them, um, flattened out that area there in the back and added some mounding uh, around it as well. Sounds odd, we flattened it and mounted it, but that's exactly what we did, so. That is gonna push to the left a little bit. Yep, okay. Now this should be an interesting angle because we're playing across these bunkers um, and across all this uh, just empty space, doing so in a way that's a little more nerve-wracking than what you would have had before. Remember, everything here was just dead flat. Just dead flat and empty. There was nothing. Now we've got some character to it. You know, you, you pull off that shot and you feel a little better about yourself. Um, there's more you could do there. I mean, a lot more you could do from a planting aspect. Um, but, like I said, I wasn't going to get into that too much this time. This next hole is one that I, I really feel good about. It was a good hole before. It was fine. You didn't need to change anything. But what we did is we, we very subtly sloped the uh, fairway down in front of the bunker and from right to left which gives it a little more character. We added a little mounding to the right, um, and then we accentuated uh, the bunker, uh, as well as mounding this area here a little bit higher, which adds a, a little extra challenge, not too much, but a little. Ah, now we get to see what that mound does. You ready? Boink. Ooh, that's going to run right off the back. There it goes. Bye. That would be a whole Kesser where if you wanted to have a runoff in the back of a couple of yards, a few yards, that could be pretty cool. <laughs> Good enough. Hole five. I'm trying to remember hole five. I don't think we had to do too much here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember this. We modified the trees to the right um, and kind of darkened that area in a little bit, um, as opposed to having just the random bushes and stuff that were over here. We we changed the mounding and structure to make it feel a little bit more natural. Uh, we cambered it slightly more from left to right. Moved that tree to affect the shadows a little bit. Um, we did mound up that tree just a little so that we push balls away from it as opposed to just directing you into the tree. And I'll show you the other changes as we go. This slope was accentuated a little bit, kicking the ball forward here. 
We then added this hump here just to break things up visually uh, as well as the mounding here. We changed the mounding behind the green to be a little more layered instead of just higher. Um, modified, the, modified the slope on both sides here to direct balls towards the green but also towards that bunker though not a lot. Uh, mounted this area a little higher and threw a little planting in there just to darken the area underneath. Uh, get up the hill. Ooh, it hung on, it hung on. next hole I, I went further than I was planning to um, but I just felt like it was a missed opportunity initially this hole sloped um, a little more drastically down and then up but this area here was simply a flat expanse of grass um, which I didn't totally understand uh, so what I did is I threw water in there and put a little waterfall there not because I think you have to, just because it seemed like, you know, it would, having water here would add something to this hole that I think was missing, um, that you, that could be added as opposed to doing a bunch of planting or something. Now, could you have used planting? Absolutely. Drop it down a little further, uh, brush it in a little bit. Um, you know, you even could have built a bridge across it or something, any number of things. We accentuated these bunkers, which you can see. We moved... We removed some trees here, moved that tree a little bit, accentuated that bunker a little bit, brought this water a little closer, did some mounding off to the right, and a little mounding off behind, mounded back further uh, around those rocks, and ended up with this, which is still not reachable in two. And that's fine, it doesn't have to be reachable in two. But I think that this second shot uh, while it doesn't look a lot different from here, it feels different because of this water. In fact, we're gonna we're gonna do something. We're gonna play it the way it probably was intended to be played. Actually, I hit that thin, so it doesn't matter. But up into this area, and this area is flat, and that's not a big deal. It's totally fine. I think this hole is is okay. Um, I think that having a bunker. In, in here, um, even just maybe a little pot bunker or something could could add some uh, add some fun to the hole, but it doesn't have to. Of course, I swung fast, and I did. I just I thought I had it dialed in a little bit. Obviously, I didn't, but whichever. I don't think we need to go any further on this, um, Kessler, as far as uh, understanding just sculpting what it can do and where to start, you know, to be a little more aggressive using the shadows a little more in that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. Now see this hole, you're already off to a better start from a sculpting standpoint. But um, this is one where I hit planting pretty hard because you're missing a big opportunity right in the front of this whole uh, of this uh, T front left so let's save and exit and I do need to exit because I'm going to bring in uh, the original version of this so give me just a second so I better go all the way out to here all right give me just a second here I'll still be here but I'll be fiddling around uh, what's this? Take that and copy it. No, nope, that's not where I want. I forgot Kessler sent this to me on a different email address. I gotta go get it. I've got three other courses sitting there that have been sent to me that I need to get on to, but not today. 
Oh, hey, Battlegrounds is uh, on sale. According to Steam, I will have to look at that. Oh. I've got Crescent Serpent to look at. I've got Terrace Golf Club to look at. And uh, one by uh, Griffin that I don't know which one that is, but I'll have to look at it here in a minute. All right, I'm going to re-download this course. Go in folder. Copy. Paste. Overwrite. Yes, that's fine. Okay, that's done. Let's see if that is going to show up in here properly. How much you want to bet? We'll see. Unpublished courses. Ba -ba if you want, I'll give you a preview of like the first hole on the course that I'm working on. Just because it's kind of fun. I like it. All right. Nope. How how does this how is this possible? I literally put in a completely different course file, and it uh, here I'll load up a different course then come back to this one. Actually, let me do this. Downloads. I want. I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna rename this. Sorry, give me just a second here. Did I leave a space in there? Nope. Okay, good. I want to copy. Hang on. I better in the game. Um, I am going to load a different course up entirely and then come back to it. So give me just a second. Unpublished. Uh, we'll do... We'll do this because this is a thing I was just fiddling with. And I think it turned out kind of stupid. I was trying some different planting techniques. The hole actually plays kind of cool. Here, show you. But I was getting really colorful. Ha! Huh. That's going to be... That's going to be totally gone. Sorry, I'll get back to what we were doing. But I forgot how this whole play is pretty cool. Yeah, it'll bounce off the hill. Good enough. Bounce off the hill. Let's go. Get out in the fairway. Good job. Now, if you picture trees all around here, which I'm not going to turn on, but it's a par 5 and it, it is actually reachable. Anyway, I think that whole play is pretty cool, so I'll probably fiddle with it at some point. But let me recopy this. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Copy. Paste. Please replace the file that's there. Thank you. Now let's see if we can play the unmodified version of... Uh, Kessler's course. Yes, baby. Will I stay in there if you sleep in there? Can you give me five minutes and then I'll come in with you? I, can. I know you can. Okay. You know what? I think it still is the new one. Well, I think I'd have to exit the game entirely, and I'm not going to do that right now. So, um, just, I think you guys know how it looked before. If you're not sure, go back to the beginning of the stream. Hey, good job. Give me a hug. Now can we go? Well, I said five minutes, not five seconds. But I think that's going to do it for now. Actually, I will show you. No, I won't. I'm going to quit. But thanks for watching, and uh, 
I'll get on to somebody else's course next time and uh, we'll make some headway. See ya.